and welcome to part two of the Akagi build. I've still got plaster all over here. <laughs> right, so what have we done so far the build? Well, not a lot really. I've done, I've got the hole here. Uh, I wonder if you can see just a second. No, wrong way. Right, you're zoomed out and you still can't see it because it's that long. There you go. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, the hole. The first step to doing the hole is to um, drill the holes out here, which it says about. That didn't take some time with um, a rotary hand, hand drill. Uh, not the electric hand drill, just an old drill. Uh, that that's basically gives way to the rudder and the, the propeller shafts and the screws on the end. So that will be in place once, but I'm going to leave them to the end because it's like um, such a, a gentle thing and it you know, can break at any point. Um, what else to talk about the thing? Uh, by the looks of it, I don't know where you can put a battery pack in there, but by the looks of it, if you want to have like propeller, well, you know, an RC done it. That's one nice thing about it, so if you are an RC modeler, but of course I'm not. Uh, what else? There's a bit of flash on it, but it's, it's not much. Uh, that can be easily scraped away with a uh, file or a very fine no, craft knife. Uh, what? Yes, yes, and um, the seam line. There's one seam line running along here. There is, I think you can see. Uh, along there, hold on, don't know where you can see on it, yeah you can see it, like one massive seam line running along the front to each other, now the, I'm not sh I'm not worried about the one underneath that along here because that would be like, like that was a bit weird, on a stand so that's not much to worry about along, along here, but my main concern is at the front here and at the back. Uh, I've already sanded most of it down. It was a quite, quite a big task, but um, I think some nice um, sanding sponges or something like that will not do a nice trick to it. Hold on. Where else is it? There you go. Or just like very wet to wet sandpaper technique. Would be nice. It's not. It's not like raised panels. It's just what panel. Are? Just a couple. Just a couple. It's gone. Um, on the back here, you've got a bit. Uh, I did. I did actually take some of that most of that off because you know, you, because where the rudders are going and stuff like that, you're gonna see it. So. Just like wet to wet sandpaper, I used to trick off. It was um, it's a, like a, a simple way of doing it. I would for a sanded sponge, but I don't have any at the minute. Um, I'll get probably get some some time later on. Wow, well, so back here. I, I think I saw that. So I don't know if you can see it. It's just right on there. It shows. Um, the code, the name Akagi on the back there. So I've never seen that on the like photographs of the ship. So that's pretty. That's really like nice on there. So that, so that, no, really, that's the only bad thing about it, just a seam line and a bit of flash. That's the only thing. I can't see anything else difficulty about it. So I think what we'll do now is we'll uh, get the main deck in. Uh, main decks and that. Now we've drilled these out and then we'll continue from there. Now here is the main uh, one of the main pieces that's like very important. In one side you've got your stand here that's that's going to be simple to put together. There's only four pieces. The main stand, two holders and a very nice M set with Japanese writing, of course, the English writing. 
So that, that looks very, very nice, that does. I can't wait to do that. I I don't know why, but I love doing engraving and stuff like that. Um, like painting on stuff. So what I'll do is, I'll build this some old time. Uh, and just basically spray the whole lot matte black. I will. Um, oh, that's, a, that's pretty good. I didn't know that. You can actually... On the back here, you've got stand, so you don't have to glue it in one place. So if you want the ship displayed on one side, you can just take it over to the other side. That's that's really that's cool. I like that. So I was wondering if I could do something similar to that. But anyway, the main part I want is the deck here, and the main parts we're going to install is this piece and this piece. Yeah, this is the front part of the deck where the chains on and the anchor and stuff like that. This part of the back here was where the cranes were, the lifeboats and the cranes were, so that's like really nice. So, nice cutters. Now we don't want to just be careful where we cut, uh, because, but, cause, you know, some, most of it will be displayed. I'll just drive a look down. That's that piece out. Now on the back here, there's um, some sprue pieces. Now here, oh no, I just got this piece out for you. Nearly finished. That didn't take much doing. Take much doing. That didn't take much doing. So but yeah, that's, that's piece out. So you can put that back in the box. There. Now, what I was going to tell you was that these two here, we'll have to cut these off, but leave these two pieces on. These parts, once going through the instructions, are for the screw that holds the, the actual um, hangers down to the ship. Is it? No, sorry, tell you that. It's where the carrier part, yeah, the landing strips, stuff like that, is base. So they go on the, the bolts they do to stop you from, like, yeah, <laughs> basically just coming off. So we take them out, but we leave them just like that. It's still being recorded. So, actually, I'm actually in, actually I actually like it. I mean, I'm in the mood to build a ship at the minute, so it's a bit out of my comfort zone, if I'm honest, building ships. I haven't had a great deal of ship shipbuilding. Um, I actually do like like drawing and knowledge and looking at different things of ships. I do like, but I've never like built one because they're pretty difficult. For me, they're pretty difficult. Well, they look pretty difficult, but then for someone who builds ships, maybe uh, building an aircraft might be difficult for them. This, I don't know whether it's me or my hobby knife or the plastic, is a bit tough. It's, it's a bit tough to like cut away. I've noticed that it's. So, right. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough to cut off. I'm, I don't want to ruin it. It's just... I'm just doing my best to try and trim it down. I'm doing my best to try and trim it down as much as possible. It's just... Such... No, the whistling. Hold on, let's get a fire out. Just on this side again. This this plastic is pretty tough, I'll give you that. It's very it's very very tough. That's not bad. I actually like that. I think what I'll do is I'll go and I'll t this is the back part now, like I says, 
well I think it's good and it along here these were some like anti aircraft or bit like cannons go or just like you know um I think yeah that's it they all sits at the back here so let's have a look how it fits in that fits in there like so like that Oh, that's a perfect fit. That's perfect. It's just basic. I've just dropped it in, and it's come together. That's very nice. That's very clever. Uh, oh, it does need a bit of holding down, so like taping that, of course. But apart from that, it's pretty good. Right, I'll go ahead and clean this up for you guys, and then we'll be right back for the. The build, like the construction of the these two pieces. Right, so it's gone a bit dark overhead, I have to say. Now we've got tied everything up. Now the thing, I want to point out this. This is a very, it's all right fit all along here. It's just to here is a bit of a bad fit. Let me zoom you in. Maybe you can see that. Uh, sorry, let me just zoom out a bit more. Like that. As you can see, oh, I don't know where you can see. But along here it's fine, but then you get to here it's a bit. Yeah, you basically have to push the hole out in order to fit this in. This is going to be a bit, a bit tasty. It's always best to get the difficult tasks out of the way first, so start by gluing the edges around here I'm going to have to move this around a bit so I can see need some tape tape my strip. Oh, it's not. Oh, it is. It's. <laughs> right, so I guess I'm going to take some tape. Place this. Uh, oh, it's not long enough. Place it that side. And a bit this side. That part's alright. Mm. Not quite convinced about this back part, it's just. I think we might need some. working out here. Clamps. Well, here we are. I've got. <laughs> I got everything back in order. Um, I did. I just couldn't record while trying to do this. It's pretty difficult. Um, there's there's got to be a load of touch-ups after it's been dried and everything else like that. Um, I'm very surprised that it was just a little bit of a poor fit, just by a few things. It's just by a poor fit. Like that, that can be so afterwards. But the main thing is that it's glued in place and it's dry. But however, at the front, it's a bit of a different story. It's such a massive ship, I can't fit on my desk. That's, that sits in perfectly like that. That's not much of a big deal. Hold on a second, let me take. I have to move everything out of the way just so I can fit in the camera. It's ridiculous. Let me just move you across a bit. Unzoom you in. Well, so the camera died. So front part goes in, no problem. Front part, it's just no problem, no biggie whatsoever. Place this down. Yeah, it does fit on the side like that. Fair enough. 
Oh, hold on a minute. Yeah, I have spotted an error. Uh, parts along here don't. In between these wing, wing roots. What the? I'm not a plane anymore. <laughs> I'll just glue it in. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. It's actually been a quite a poor fit. So there's got to be a lot of work done to it at the minute. That's a very like, a lot of work. But, however, I actually want to build a project that I actually... Like I said, I wanted it to be challenging. So, yeah, this is just another fine example of it. Just try to keep it down, it just won't stay down. It soon stay down when you put your hammer on it. Mm. It's such a tight fit. Yeah, you get the picture. I do Actually, pretty difficult task, Caesar. It's actually gone better in than the back part, but, you know, it's just how it is. I think what I'll do is I'll get a rubber band and stick stick around the front. Something like that. Hello, um yeah. I've done everything now, it's it's actually been a bit of a pain actually getting this first section and this part's not too bad, there was only like I said, the parts across there and there that's the only parts that I don't want yeah uh, for here, this part it's not like a sweet tooth if you get what I mean, it's all uh, not fully there. I mean, these parts here that extend out towards the bow are actually a bit too um, big, if you know what I mean. So that's one like thing that really gets me about this. Um, what else we got? Got this part here. The both the front and the back don't match up as much. They don't. Um, Hold a second, let me let me try and zoom in, mate. There you go, you can see it now, what I mean. It just doesn't like, add up at the back here, and as well as at the front. Just doesn't um, fit together properly. But apart from that, just by looking at it, and it's actually gone pretty together, alright. You no, know, like non major difficulties, stuff like that. So, a bit of filler would do um, nicely. Uh, what else is there? Let's think. Uh, I think what I'll do is I think I'll leave it to dry fully and then just work on different things for now that can be like made better and stuff like that. Um, then we can start by pulling this back deck in and across here and here. So then it would look, start to look like an actual ship. So that's going to be very interesting. Okay, guys, it's uh, half nine, nine now, and the hull is basically um, completed. Apart from a few little details, it's mainly completed. Uh, might need a bit of more filler just there to keep it much better. Uh, but gun use is amazing. Gun use is that it's for an old kit it's really 
very simple to put together. Uh, bad news is that it does have a lot of gaps. I have filler here along these join lines. These parts, these parts are alright. Apart from that, uh, everything else has gone together. Now, I did mention I was going to put these out at the end, but after having a look at some uh, clips on on the internet and stuff like that, some people actually put these on first before applying the, the whole red. Uh, so what have we got to do to it now? We've got basically just... Um, we're going to go into the stage of painting this now after we've done some of your more touch-ups on it. We're going to go into the painting stage of this. Now this won't this won't take that long to paint up. Uh, I'll show you what paint we're using in the next stage, which will be after this. So good, good, uh, good progress so far on it, liking it. So. Let's get this painting underway. Okay, so now you're wondering what the hell are we doing now? So, oh, bloody water. We're in a different location today for spraying, so got me airbrush all rigged up. And I just realised I forgot the paper, so back in one second. Okay, now we've got tissue paper, thank God. We can start with the painting. We've got airbrush setup, model, uh, paint. Talk about paint wise, this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using Tamiya's XF9, a uh, whole red it's called. Um, it does recommend that you use um, TS33 as in a can, but many people would use this actually to paint it, so it does look all red, so what's the point? So we're going to take a mixture of two to one basically. That's Two lots of paint to one lots of thinner. Uh, from Tactical Jackalope, I learned how to use uh, these types of paint if I could get the lid off. There you go. Thing is, Tamiya lids, they can like get like that at times. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we need to write, let's do 20 drops. Of this, if it will even pick up. That's one, two. I won't even pick any of it up, that's typical. Uh, okay, so what do we do now? <laughs> Anyway, just let's just use 20 drops of this. So, one, two, three. Bloody hell. Let's see. Let's. No, that's that one. Oh well, uh, so let's take this then. <laughs> take a bit of this, a bit more I think. I know you can actually like, just pour it in, but last time I did that it just didn't work to right standards. Right, so that's that in, I think that's enough. So we need 20 drops of this, not 20 drops, 10 drops of this thinner, sorry. So it's, it's equivalent of a 2 to 1 ratio, so so example what he said explain was um, so if you're using 20 drops of paint that one's going in the bin uh, 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's better than the other one because the other one's broke, so that's gone that. 
just mix up the paint inside, get a nice Alright, so now I think we're ready to paint, so let's, let's give it a go, get a kitchen towel. That's, yeah, that's a nice colour. You can see that. It's a very nice colour for whole red actually. Might need some more later, but this is the basics. So leave that over there. And basically what we just do is nice, even coats. It's actually a pretty nice colour, this is. I'm just trying not to get sprayed onto the tripod here. It's actually pretty difficult. Now it's getting a bit thin. Lots of things. It's actually getting pretty, very thin. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. It's, I think we use just a bit too much, uh, like, uh, thinner. But apart from that, it's given a nice coat. Okay, I think, I think we're out of paint now. That was the last lot of paint, so. Uh, what else? Yep, that's it, we ran out of paint. <laughs> so just that, that's all it's lasted, so you do need a big amount of paint. So I think what I'll do is um, I'll basically just teach you the basics and then we'll catch up after we've completed this task. And here we are. Uh, it's taken a bit of a while to finish off but it looks okay. Uh, I'm not sure about the colour though. I'm just, I'm just depending on whether like, it was a good uh, normal colour. I have to do some research. Uh, if, any, if any of you guys are interested into um, Japanese ships like from World War II and know about the colours, uh, you don't mind letting me know about the hull. The, I mean the hull red. I've got the the grey camouflage all sorted but the hull red I'm not very sure about. And here we are back again. Why do people always interrupt you? Uh, <clears throat> like yeah, like I was saying, if anyone you know about the whole colour, then please let me know. But apparently, this is supposed to be the colour um, that is used on many ships. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the colour. It's very nice. Oh crap! Uh, it's all dry in a matter of seconds, so that's one good thing. Uh, other things. Oh yes, um, I've still got paint left over. It's oh no, I haven't. It's empty. Uh, that's that's worth it. That was Jesus. Uh, I think that's it for the red. Just a bit on the front here. Got also got to do the lines on the front. That's an important thing. Just give you this prayer, but yeah, it's yeah, it's empty now, guys. So this is well, I said well, it's giving a nice coat of paint, so I'm happy. Yeah, that's perfect. So I think that's I'm going to end the video now. I'm going. There's nothing else really I can do now until um, some railings arrive. Uh, I might paint a bit of the decks uh, on the underside, so. Yeah, thank I I think I'm just gonna end this part here, so thank you very much for watching guys. Let's try and bye for now.